David Walker. Where, where, where's, where's David? David M. Walker was the U.S. government's top auditor, its comptroller general for 10 years, and the spectacled sire of the Government Accountability Office. He puts no stock in party labels and wants to help rebellious truce put a coffin on bitter partisanship, misinformation, and ideological divides. America, within the last several decades, has become addicted to consumption, deficits, and debt. And they represent an illness, like a cancer, that's growing within us, that literally threatens our future, our future position in the world, our future standard of living at home, and even the future domestic tranquility in our streets. Well, the United States will continue to exist, but this country was founded on certain principles and values that we've strayed from. No great civilization and no republic has lasted more than a few hundred years. It's very important that we learn the lessons of history, that we get back to the principles and values that made us great so that our future can be better than our past and so that we can stand the test of time. Young people today need to know that their future is being mortgaged at record rates, that investments in their future are being cut at a time that they're going to face a lot tougher competition in an increasingly competitive and interconnected global marketplace. That's not only fiscally irresponsible, it is unethical and immoral, and it needs to stop. With youth unemployment and underemployment so in America so high, what are the inherent risks involved with such a troubling reality? We have very high unemployment and underemployment right now, particularly among the youth and the minority community and we need to do something about it. But the fact is, is that we've got to improve our education system. We have to provide more opportunity because having this high a level of unemployment and underemployment not only is a problem for the economy, it's a problem from the standpoint of equity and domestic tranquility. Now, a lot of the materials put forth by the fiscal wake-up tour uh, paint a very, fairly bleak picture, picture of our future in America. So how can we, as a nation, clean up our act to ensure a more prosperous future for our country? Other countries have faced serious financial problems in the past, and they've made tough decisions, risen to the occasion, and now they're much better off. If they can do it, we can do it. And there are a number of ideas out there to help solve our fiscal problem, coming from various commissions and various groups. There are answers. We can make sure that our future is better than our past, but we have to face the facts and acknowledge that we're going to have to make tough choices on social insurance programs, on defense and other spending, uh, and on taxes. When you speak of tough choices, what exactly do you mean? What are, what are the specific things that we are going to have to deal with that maybe not be so palatable right now on, on the political spectrum? We're going to have to reimpose tough budget controls, tougher than the ones that we had from the early 90s to 2002, because we're in worse shape. But we need to be careful about how we implement them so that we don't undercut our economic recovery and so that we can continue to make progress on under unemployment and underemployment. We're going to have to reform Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid to make sure that they meet the needs of those in need, but that they're affordable and sustainable over time. We're going to have to reduce defense and other spending without compromising our national security. We're going to have to engage in comprehensive tax reform that will make the system simpler, fairer, more equitable, more competitive, and generate adequate revenues to pay our bills and deliver on the promises we intend to keep. We're going to have to do all of that and more, and we need to get started soon. So, uh, in the past, you have stated that Medicare and Medicaid are really the source of a lot of our fiscal woes. So how, do, how can we specifically, or what areas can we specifically address in, within those programs to make them solvent while still maintaining their benefits? If there's one thing that could bankrupt America, it's out of control health care costs. The government has overpromised on health care. We're going to have to rationalize our promises. In addition, we're the only major industrialized nation that doesn't have a budget for what the government will spend on health care. Nobody else is dumb enough to write a blank check. 
So we have to rationalize our promises, put ourselves under a budget, change what we pay for and how we pay, and make a number of other reforms, learning from other countries and learning from the experiences that have worked uh, here domestically as well. In the late 90s to early 2000s, we had four consecutive years of budget surpluses. Um, what happened in 2003 that brought us to this black hole of immense debt? We had four years of budget surpluses from 1998 through 2002. But in 2003, we returned to deficits and growing debt burdens, primarily because the budget controls that existed from the early 1990s until the end of 2002 expired, and things have spun out of control ever since. Now, what specific bu budget controls are you speaking of? Because you had a key role in crafting some of those under the Clinton administration. Well, they existed when I came in. Okay. okay. All right. From the early 1990s until the end of 2002, there were tough statutory budget controls that constrained spending and that prevented the Congress from making more promises when they had already promised more than we could afford to begin with. So as, a, you know, as the head of the Government Accountability Office, you know, Comptroller General of the United States, you're a, a, a highly regarded financial expert. Why has no one on Capitol Hill taken your advice and changed our course of action? I was the number one witness in Congress for about eight years in a row, and I spoke out loud and long about our challenges and what we need to do to fix it. And while many people heard what I had to say, and acknowledge that it was right, they haven't taken action. And therefore, it's now time to go to the people because the most powerful words in the Constitution are the first three, we the people. We the people are responsible and accountable for what does or does not happen. And youth in particular have a disproportionate need and a disproportionate opportunity to make a difference because we're talking about your future. But what do these Washington power players have to gain by not listening to, to you and continuing to mortgage our futures at record rates and essentially risking the future of America's uh, financial security? Unfortunately, a vast majority of elected officials are career politicians, and therefore they view their position as a job, and they don't want to lose it involuntarily. Many of them believe that the people can't handle the truth, so they don't tell them the truth. In addition, many people don't have the answers. Many are also concerned with making sure that their political party either stays in power or gains power. There are too many people concerned about their personal interest and their partisan political interest and not enough about the country's interest. And frankly, the people have allowed them to get away with this for far too long. But it's it's an interesting dichotomy because you would think that acting in the best interests of your constituents and the country itself would allow you to be reelected more often. So how has it come to this point where it's better for them to lie to the people and not deal with the truth so that they can get reelected? Shouldn't it be the other way around? Human beings like to have as much as they can, especially if somebody else is going to pay for it. And as a result, People have asked for more government programs, for more tax cuts, and politicians for too long have given it to them. In effect, satisfying current wants, but mortgaging our future. That has gone on too long. It's got to stop.